Welcome to Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church. I'm Wade Myers, your Director of Music and Worship Arts. I'm delighted to have you with us in worship today. Today is Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of Lent. You've probably done yourself or seen the marking of a cross on foreheads today in an ash. This is representative of our community as Christians, how we've all together fallen short of the glory of God, and also a reminder of our mortality. It's a time where we need to remember that we will need to die to ourselves in order to be reborn in Christ, to be resurrected. Lent, much like Advent, is a time of preparation. While Advent is a time of preparation for Christmas and the birth of Christ, Lent is a time of preparation for the death and resurrection. You can see this also as a symbol in ourselves, a time where we need to reflect and sacrifice and die to ourselves so that we can be resurrected in Christ for a better life. So one of the things that we did in Advent is we began and ended the season with a song, Canticle of the Turning. We did two verses on the first Sunday of Advent, two verses on the last Sunday of Advent, and we also had another hymn that we sang throughout the season. We're reflecting that in this next season of preparation in Lent, where we will be singing Change My Heart, O God, every Sunday in Lent as well as today. Change My Heart, O God, is by Eddie Espinoza. It'll be sung for us by Becky Heron Mayo. And it's a song that emphasizes a big part of what we're trying to do in Lent, which is open our hearts to God, to be changed by God, to die to our old selves so that we can be born again or resurrected. So we will also be concluding worship today with Izoi and Tafo, which is a Byzantine Greek chant written in the early 500s by Romanos the Melodist, and we'll be revisiting that on Good Friday. And what's nice about it is that it kind of, much like Lent and Holy Week and Easter itself, um, it puts juxtapositions, Izoi and Tafo, the life in the grave, so we have life in the grave, and we have light in the darkness. And all of these wonderful symbols that the church has given us. And I hope that you find this meaningful in worship. And I hope that it helps you, along with your Lenten journey, to open your heart to be changed by God. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. As we come into Ash Wednesday and Lent, we are reminded that we are dust and ashes, bone and breath, full of frailty and limitation. Lent calls us into reflection and repentance, drawing closer to God. Lent calls us to see ourselves as dust and ash, alive with God's breath. Lent invites us to be pilgrims, moving with Jesus toward the tomb. 
In Lent, we travel moving toward an end that is also a beginning. And so we come to worship the God of glory with all that is within us. Let us pray. Holy God, treasure of faithful hearts, through Jesus Christ, you taught us how to pray, to give, to serve, to live, to love. Reshape, restore, and renew us by the hidden power of your Spirit, so that we may receive the way of life that belongs to the faithful. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and then 12 through 17. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm. On my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be any, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave the room and the bride in her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. And do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the prophets, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lent is a gift to us. From the church. Keeping up appearances is exhausting. Pretending to be something that we are not, deceiving others and ourselves, takes a toll on our spirits. The illusion of perfection makes us weary. And so Lent invites us into a place of freedom as we speak the truth about ourselves, reflecting on who we are and who God is. And so we know the truth again about God trusting in God's abundant and living mercy. Let us pray, first together, and then as we're invited into reflection. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts, so that when we turn to you and confess our sins, we may receive your full and perfect forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We confess to you, O God, the places where we benefit from the labor of others and are enriched by their oppression. We claim things that do not belong to us and fail to see the connections all around us. We confess to you, O God, that we see the shadows of the world and pass by, letting go of work we could do and letting evil stay in place. We 
We confess to you, O God, the places where we are in bondage to our possessions or to our position. We confess to you, O God, the places where we are selfish when we could be generous and where we are judgmental where we could be compassionate. We confess to you, O God, the places where we choose the flashy over the true and the quick over the lasting. We confess to you, O God, the places where our sins are too comfortable to change. We repeat our mistakes and fail to make the effort to change. We confess to you, O God, the places where we neglect your image inside us and sell ourselves short. We fail to speak the truth and lack the courage of your spirit. Dust we are, and to dust we shall return. In between, we are God's beloved people, created from dust, we're held together by extravagant love. Turn away from sin, live faithfully, embracing the Spirit of God within you and within others. Now, as we come to this year's Ash Wednesday service, we acknowledge that none of us have ashes made from last year's palms because we weren't together for Palm Sunday last year. But maybe you have some ashes in your fireplace that you can mix with just a drop of olive oil. Or maybe there's some soil in your garden. If you dig beneath the snow and the ice, you can just grab a little bit of snow, of, of soil and mix it with a drop of water. Doing so reminds us not only of our humility before God, but it also reminds us of creation itself. That um, God made us from dust the first time around. And so part of what happens in this holy season of Lent is that God says, let me recreate you in Jesus Christ. God takes the soil of the earth, the ashes um, of creation, and marks us with the sign of the cross to say, you are my beloved child. You are the new creation that um, I want to make. I want you to look like my son, Jesus. And so I mark you with the sign of the cross. So if you have uh, family members at home, you can mark the sign of the cross on each other, or you can do that yourself, or um, as is suggested, maybe just water and reminding you of your baptism. Um, take the elements of the earth and remember that we are God's new creation. The Bible tells us that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The good news is that our God does not de desire the death of sinners, but rather that we may turn from our transgressions and turn toward life. Therefore, we implore God to grant us true repentance, that those things which we do this day may be pleasing to God, that the rest of our lives may be lived faithfully, and that at the last, we may come to God's eternal joy through Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay. strength to persevere in you to conquer sin. And through these days of penitence, and through this passion tide, yes, evermore in life and death, O Lord, with us abide. Abide with us till when this life of suffering shall be past, and Easter of unending joy we may attain at last. Our gospel reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. Friends, we are grateful today to be led in worship by our brother in the Lord, the Reverend Mike McNamara from Rockville Presbyterian Church. And we want to welcome uh, the members of Rockville Presbyterian Church to this Ash Wednesday service as well. It's good for Presbyterians always to be reminded that we are uh, connected to one another through National Capital Presbytery, mostly through the Lord Jesus, of course. And um, we are just so happy when we can uh, serve together. So in that spirit, Rockville Church and Gaithersburg Church, let us pray together. God of our salvation, We embark this day on a journey that we have made before, a journey that will once again sweep us into unexpected places, always in pursuit of the path of your obedient Son. Send your Holy Spirit to open our lips, that our mouths may declare your praise, and we may be guided on this path of penitence, prayer, and preparation. Amen. My friends, as we embark on this 40-day journey of Lent, uh, as we move towards the cross, I want to remind you that the traditional disciplines of this season are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And if you would like to strengthen your prayer life, uh, the GPC folk, Rockville people too, my goodness, why not? Uh, you're invited to join our prayer network, which is our um, electronic prayer chain, if you will. You can submit your own prayer requests and then pray for your brothers and sisters. You also are welcome to um, 
a 15 minute prayer service via Zoom on the Wednesdays of Lent, starting at 8.30 in the morning. If you're on your way to work, listen to it on your phone. But um, Elder Chris Maldarelli is leading a season of prayer, morning prayer, during Lent, on Wednesdays in Lent. Fasting is another discipline. A lot of people fast from food on a certain day or a category of food. Um, some people fast from video games. It's hard these days of COVID to fast totally from screen time because it seems like we're uh, spending more of our time on our screens, but maybe fasting from television or, or movies or something like that. But here's, here's a challenge. What if we were to fast from criticism? What if we were to fast from criticizing another person, another human being that God has made? A few years ago, our Lenten Bible study um, challenged us to listen to the loved ones in our home or a friend or a colleague at work for five minutes without interrupting them, without criticizing them, correcting them, directing them, challenging them in any way, but just to listen for five minutes. That was a game changer of all the activities, of all the um, actions that the Bible study asked us to undertake that season. That was the single one that made a difference in people's lives. So fasting from criticizing and then finally, almsgiving. The, the sky's the limit here, um, but GPC is undertaking a fundraising goal of $5,000 to benefit local mission charities. You can find more information about that on the website and in the daily emails. Um, but we encourage you to um, participate. Uh, we're not collecting a lot of cans uh, this year because we're not meeting here in the building, but Instead of feeding the 5,000 with those individual food items, we're hoping to collect $5,000 for um, our local charities. So we invite your participation in that mission project. So as we go from this forth from this place in peace, we'll listen to the song, that Byzantine chant that Wade mentioned at the beginning of the service. Let's think about the fact that God is making something new in us this holy season of Lent. And may God go with you in all things. Amen. Ke angelon stratie exempli tondo, sin catava sin dox avus et in sin. Isoi pos niscis, pos ketafoicis, Tu ta na tu to vasilionis ve, ke tu adut hus ne crus exanistas. Megalinomense isu vasilev, Get a moment in Tafin, get a path is the onesosas in my sect is for us. Is Christe, que angelon stratie exempli tono, 
Singatava sindoxabus etin sin.